اهلا وسهلا بكم جميعا الى هذه الندوه Welcome you ladies and gentlemen to this seminar that is being convened by Al Jazeera Center for Studies which is in cooperation also with the Brookings Center the BDC and this is paying heed to think tanks and research centers and their role when it comes to policy making and there are a number of challenges uh, and impediments uh, that uh, these uh, face uh, from a social, economic and political perspectives, uh, particularly when it comes uh, to the independence uh, of uh, uh, and also the lack uh, of certain skills which uh, would uh, impede the possibility of having a kind of uh, a clear uh, set of indicators about the situation on the ground. Uh, so in this seminar, we're going to talk about the reality of think tanks and the role that can be played uh, by these uh, centers uh, in order to make sure that these uh, research papers are objective and of high quality and how a message can be sent to the different stakeholders and uh, are there differences uh, and discrepancies between think tanks, uh, research centers in the Arab world and other regions of the world. And we have with us uh, here today, Dr. Nader Qabani, Director of Research at the Brookings Doha Center, the BDC. And we have with us also Dr. Azeddin Abdel Mawla, the Manager of Research, Research Department at Al Jazeera Center for Studies. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Masri, Executive Director of the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies, Dr. Sari Hanafi, Professor of Sociology, Department of Sociology, Anthropology, and Media Studies at the American University, Dr. Uh, Mahjoub Zwiri, Director of Gulf Studies Center of Qatar University, would like to talk about the reality of research centers. Uh, and you're from the Brookings Center. First of all, thank you very much, Mr. Osman. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you all. Please uh, allow me at the onset to thank the Al Jazeera Center for Studies uh, for working with us in the convening of this very important event. Uh, and I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Azzeddin and other colleagues for uh, classifying Al Jazeera Center for Studies as the best research center in the GCC region. This is the third year in a row and this is in keeping with the rating that was carried out uh, by the Pennsylvania University and this report is going to be issued tomorrow as I suppose. Uh, Al Jazeera Center for Studies was ranked uh, fifth uh, in the Arab world. Uh, so this is uh, testimony to the efforts exerted by our colleagues in Al Jazeera Center for Studies, uh, high quality research papers and reports. Uh, congratulations. I would like uh, very briefly introduce to you the BDC. The BDC is uh, a think tank and the uh, also a political analysis uh, center and uh, it is part of the Washington Brookings Center. This uh, research center, the BDC, was established in 2008. Uh, so I think it was established after the establishment of Al Jazeera Center for Studies. The BDC has a number of research papers and analyses that are independent about this region, talking about the uh, North Africa and the Gulf, and it concentrates on three matters, uh, international relations in the MENA region, and also the comprehensive uh, economic development, and also governance and the relationship between the state and the citizen. And with regard to the importance of research uh, centers and think tanks, uh, these play a very important role with regard to the research papers and studies that are issued and that are independent and that are dealing with public policies in general. So their importance lies in the fact that they do try to 
come up with solutions, uh, economic and social and political, and we can describe these think tanks and research centers as uh, mediating kind of entities that link between academics and the researchers and also the decision makers from the other side. That is why we find that there are so many think tanks and research centers that uh, work uh, also in cooperation with universities. In my intervention, I would like to concentrate on three main points with regard to the position and situation of these think tanks and research centers. The first point that I would like to talk about is that the Arab region is weak when it comes to knowledge production. We have a weakness when it comes to knowledge production and analysis. The second point that I would like to talk about is that the Arab region and countries in the MENA region have also a shortage when it comes to public institutions. Uh, these institutions in their work of uh, containing and understanding information and using such information in policy making. And the third weakness lies in the linkage between knowledge production and the use of such knowledge when it comes to the decision makers. And this linkage, this link uh, is uh, manifested in uh, the CSOs, think tanks, and research centers, uh, CSOs, uh, that deal with social and economic and political matters. I'm not going to go into details now, but afterwards I'm going to give you details and examples about this situation in the Arab world. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being brief, Dr. Azzedin. I do not want I do not know whether you want to talk about the report that was issued by Pennsylvania University. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Nader Qabani for this uh, continuous cooperation, and we hope that such cooperation is going to continue and lead to partnerships uh, and other research uh, uh, projects uh, in the state of Qatar and beyond. And secondly, I would like to give a brief uh, uh, kind of uh, idea about this report because this is the report that we are talking about today for us to be able to give an idea to the audience present with us here today about this report. So this is an annual report that has been issued 12 years for 12 years. So uh, it started in 2006 uh, and it is issued every year and the edition that is going to be issued tomorrow is going to be the 13th edition so this is the only report that uh, tries uh, to uh, classify and rank the different think tanks uh, and research centers uh, this uh, kind of uh, index is very important indeed and it includes in excess of eight thousand research centers from different parts of the world, including more than 500 research centers in the MENA region. And this index uh, uh, includes uh, and adopts uh, a very strict methodology when it comes uh, to the rating of the different uh, think tanks uh, and uh, research centers. There are in excess of 30 standards or criteria and there are more than three kind of cycles uh, and uh, we have uh, more than 3,500 entities, including uh, university lecturers uh, and journalists uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So this is very important indeed. And uh, we have uh, 100 and 25 cities from all around the world that are going to launch this uh, report, the uh, edition that is going to be launched uh, tomorrow. So if I have some more time. So there are seminars taking place uh, in 125 cities, yes. And Doha is one of those uh, cities. Uh, so 
125 cities are going to launch the report tomorrow. Al Jazeera Center of Studies is part of Al Jazeera Network. It is uh, the uh, research arm of Al Jazeera Network. It was established two years before the establishment of the BDC. It concentrates uh, in its research uh, on uh, uh, political geography. It uh, issues and publishes books, uh, activities, uh, discussion sessions, uh, and so on and so forth on a regular basis. And uh, most of the things that we do publish uh, are available for everybody. They are published uh, on our website in both Arabic and English. And most of our activities and events are uh, uh, broadcast live uh, on Al Jazeera Mubashir as we are doing today. And the third point that I would like to talk about is about the reality of uh, these uh, centers uh, com in comparison with the centers in the world. So sometimes uh, what we produce uh, is better in quality uh, than other centers, particularly when it comes uh, to topics that are relevant to this particular region. But the main difference lies in the length of experience that Western think tanks and research centers have. So we know that the first research center that was uh, uh, established was uh, in the 19th century, in 18. 1831 and uh, this think tank is very important indeed and it gives consultancies to the British government. Uh, also we have Brookings Centre which is uh, almost a 100 year old. We have Carnegie, we have Chatham House and so on and so forth. These are very long standing uh, kind of centres uh, with a cumulative experience and they have a very established, well established kind of uh, experienced. Uh, so our situation is different. We have Al-Hahram Center, which is 50 years uh, old approximately. And if we look at the centers represented, we will find that the age of those centers are between uh, 5 to 12 years. Uh, so in 2006, uh, our center was established and in the BDC was established in 2008, 2010, the uh, Arabi Center and then the GCC Center. So we are all in the first order slopes. Uh, so we hope uh, that uh, in the future uh, our centers are going to be of great use uh, to the decision makers and to the public, particularly if some of the conditions are met, particularly with regard to the challenges that some of our centers face and the conditions that should be met for us uh, to be much more productive and more expansive. <laughs> Dr. Qabbani, it's your turn now to, to speak about some of the linking uh, points between decision makers and uh, uh, think tanks, and maybe he will show us that these li link, uh, linkages might be stronger than uh, necessary, uh, as, uh, as if the, the sort of securitizing these uh, centers. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, in fact, I want in the five first five minutes that I have that I would like to focus on trying to uh, uh, speak about the main mission or message of the such centers in the world, including us in the Arab world. When we speak about center for studies, we are speaking about making, uh, building ideas and policies uh, and politics is, is about ideas and the ideas are the source of power. And we talk about source of power and the tool of power, we find that the most important thing or the, these are the points of the interest for, these are those who are keen to have the power. That's why we see that most of the uh, think tanks were, uh, were created within the state uh, institutions, not by personal initiatives, except for uh, some uh, exceptions. That's why I think we should take into consideration that what is done by think tanks and, uh, and uh, uh, in the world in general is uh, the creation or the making of ideas uh, which is an industrial thing and that it requires a specific environment uh, and a, a lot of uh, freedom, a lot of uh, uh, independence and knowledge of uh, what they, they do and their mission and their main objectives or goals in the work they do. 
and also they also need to know who was who their the target uh, targets when we speak about the creation of ideas and thinking and politics we are speaking about uh, societies where there is political dynamism a lot of interaction the political arena and if you uh, apply this on the an arabic environment we will find a big problem in trying to understand this that, that to understand the political dynamism that exists in the arab world so that the think tanks and work in a way that could le, le, help them to uh, fulfill their missions that's why when you speak about the making of ideas or things uh, I, I, I mean that the, th the think tanks and the creation of ideas in the Arab world in general, of course there are exceptions, uh, uh, are being securitized and are being politicized. And this is not a moral uh, uh, evaluation. I'm not saying this is wrong or right. No, I'm not saying that it's shameful or not as shameful. What I'm saying, I'm only diagnosing a case. When we speak about politicizing these centers, is to use them, use them, speak about money, about um, influence, about uh, how how the, these centers can be in the service of an idea or a government, how can become a, a tool in the public diplomacy, because think tanks are uh, one of the tools of public diplomacy, uh, because uh, with, uh, well, the think tanks can do that job because they can speak about political dynamism, a certain s amount of freedom, and the, so that's why their influence is even more than just the production of ideas. That's why we're also speaking about securitization. Securitization is related to I the creation of uh, ideas and politics. Uh, th it requires a monopoly of ideas, a monopoly of politics to say that only the government is the creative in this field. That's why the centers of production of ideas try to penetrate this, uh, this uh, uh, prohibited uh, environment to, be, to have their own role. Uh, and there is no a certain amount of response from the governments and the states. Uh, uh, these policies cannot be able to be influential. That's why many of the seed uh, centers produce products that have no consumers. That they might produce beautiful ideas, but nobody would consume these ideas. Uh, that's, that's why they become on the level of it can only be lecturing, a sort of uh, luxury. Uh, uh, in fact, speaking about uh, research centers is, uh, is, is something that should focus on the creation and building of ideas and production in the service of the man, of the human beings, and the main objective should be creating a better environment than the one that exists, uh, regardless of which one it is. If they have 20% of freedom, let's make it 50. If it's 90% it's of freedom, let's make it uh, 100. That's to say, to create better environment and opportunities in any given environment. That's why the creation of ideas are politics are very important in the, the, in the production of these centers. But if they, they are dealt with in, within two, the two concepts of politicization and securitization, and that, that means the, the truth becomes a tool in the hands of the states, and this way the politics becomes only products without consumers. I end my first intervention by saying that the creation of ideas and politics are an important factor and for all the societies who want to make some progress and want to benefit from them uh, scientific capabilities, especially in societies where a big number of educated people and uh, inter intelligent people and a lot of awareness. Uh, that's why the production of knowledge and policies become an important thing that must be used in a better way th than the present uh, time. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahjoub. I now give the gift to Dr. Mohammed Masri, who you think there's a difference between uh, think centers and uh, th think, think tanks and studies uh, centers. Uh, would you please explain what you mean by this differentiation? Thank you very much. I thank the uh, Jazeera Center for Studies and the Brooking Center. I think that there are three main points that should be taken in consideration when you speak about uh, uh, think tanks uh, and research ones uh, and their uh, effects and influence on public policies. Uh, and, and this applies not to the Arab world, but also on the all over the world in general. Uh, first of all, there's a big difference between uh, a research center and a think tank. Mm -hmm. The think tank and here I would like to use, uh, and it's not a, 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 a center for production of ideas, it is a production for 
political analysis. I mean by this that a think uh, a think tank, uh, uh, the research uh, center uh, deals with specific uh, topics within a framework uh, built for research centers in order to enrich knowledge in a specific field. And that's why the research centers are there in universities in the, all over the world, in the West and the Arab world, and, and they have contributed a lot in the production of knowledge and in uh, orienting uh, the public opinion in general or and, and uh, influencing those who are influential in the public uh, uh, opinion uh, about the new issues and dealing with some uh, social, political, and economic uh, phenomena. A think tank uh, center for political analysis that presents such analysis for about uh, an, a political development of phenomena in a certain area of the world. And usually, this uh, political analysis is, uh, 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 is very much limited in number of words and the scope. Uh, it is only, uh, it's just like uh, collecting some information about a given phenomena and then adding some recommendations to this phenomena uh, so that this could be taken into consideration by the decision makers. To clarify this difference, in natural sciences, in natural science, there are uh, research centers. There's a senior research center for physics and another for uh, nuclear physics. And there's no think tank for nuclear physics or physics in general. Because what would think tank would be in would be collect, collecting number of uh, information to reach uh, conclusions? Uh, the other thing is that the other the other limitation or factor is that the phenomena of uh, uh, centers of political analysis that are the research centers. This is in fact an American, a purely American phenomena. Uh, and uh, it is the result of some historical uh, 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 circumstances related to the American system, the Congress, and the dynamism of the political system in, in USA, the Congress, the lobbies, and the political parties, and the transformation of the United States into a major power in the world after the Second World War. There were there was a necessity to have some centers like this to present information to the decision makers, the, the political ones, to the uh, State Department, to the Congress, about this uh, world the, uh, the USA was dealing with or is dealing with. The third factor is that the, these centers for political analysis in their beginnings and their developments in the USA and after that in Europe, uh, but more limited, had wanted to have influence or effects on the decision makers. But this uh, effect become reciprocal uh, with the growth of number of these centers and the, with the, their linkages or attachment to some political parties uh, that make them have a special mission to, to achieve. In addition to the uh, link between the decision makers and the center's political analysis uh, uh, and to, uh, that leads to the American administration and from the American administration this leads to the center of political analysis. All this led to a sort of a, a mutual uh, effect or for, for example George Bush decided to launch war on Iraq. So there were more than 24 political analysis centers in the USA who would uh, create documents and recommendations about this war. It could be maybe two or three only against the war, but uh, the other centers, all of them were presenting p p policy briefs and political uh, uh, recommendations and reports about the importance of launching this war. That's why they affect the uh, political elite that might in turn affect or have influence on the American decision making uh, about the war. If we take the Arab world, for example, we are speaking about a number of issues. First of all, I think the centers of political analysis in the Arab world are very weak. And uh, the research centers are, by contrast, are, the, are linked to the Iraq, uh, Arab universities. Uh, and, uh, but there are some uh, successful experience in some of the Arab, Arab universities. Uh, for example, the Center for uh, Gulf Studies in the State University of Qatar uh, produces knowledge about the issues uh, important to the Gulf and the region and have a, a major program for that. Uh, and then the other things that there are some 
politics uh, analysis centers attached to the government uh, that do the, the job of political analysis, and there are also the centers for political analysis, although they are very little, who are independent uh, and that are usually uh, very much t uh, the hostages of financing or funding. And that is, we can say that uh, when you say that the academic or uh, the centers uh, do have an effect on the political uh, position in the Arab world is something that we must take in consideration before deciding that uh, about uh, in the political environment of the of the Arab world. Uh, first of all, the political system in the Arab uh, Arab uh, region is not democratic. While as we need a democratic one that can work independently and publish independently, and then the independence of these research centers and political analysis, and the the uh, financial independence of the center, and fourth that uh, to have the information they need that might uh, they, that enables them to build up on uh, these centers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed. Dr. Uh, Sari Hanafi, is there any concern with regard to the think tanks in the West? And if there is, is it justified? Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation. Yes, exactly. I would like to say that there are three ways or entry points in order to evaluate think tanks and research centers. The first entry point is the institutional kind of entry point. Uh, and uh, when we think uh, about this, we think about financing these centers. Uh, when I talk about a research paper, the first question that comes to me, who is financing, who is funding this center? Because what comes to their mind uh, is uh, automatically going to impose a certain agenda. And uh, uh, most of the time, uh, most uh, of the funding comes uh, from outside the Arab world. And then you would find that the approach is a post postponing kind of uh, approach. Uh, and when they say about, uh, they talk about American funding, that means that there is a kind uh, of uh, an American agenda that is being imposed. Uh, so many of the uh, research centers and uh, think tanks uh, in the Arab region are under the influence uh, of the authoritarian uh, government uh, in which uh, it exists uh, and uh, only uh, the evaluation and the uh, appraisal of these centers should be on the basis of the production made by researchers. So based on that, we have to decide to what extent uh, these researchers are objective. And as Dr. Mahroub has said, uh, independence is very important and also freedom of opinion is also very important. To what extent uh, there are liberties and freedom and to what extent uh, the opinion and other opinion are expressed and manifested by those uh, research centers and think tanks. Uh, so there are so many centers uh, that can be objective. And we might also find that there are some centers in the Arab world that are objective as well. And the opposite is also possible. So what is very important is independence and freedom of opinion. So the funding issue is very important indeed. So the relationship between the funding entity and the, the center should be very weak. Let's take France as an example. I have studied in France, and I know it very well. I know it inside out. Uh, so as Dr. Mohammed had said, Europe does not have uh, this uh, culture, uh, So because they have very important centers, and these centers are funded by the state. But now the situation has stayed. Uh, the, uh, the situation has changed, sorry. So the EU, we find that uh, the outcomes of these research centers are uh, different from each other. Uh, but there is independence. And this is uh, due to uh, liberalism and also liberty and uh, due to the factors that are available.
uh, some of our youth, if they attempt uh, to carry out certain research papers or research uh, activities, they might end up in prison or even die. So that is why uh, I would like to say that in the Arab world, there is a very important problem, particularly when it comes to trust and confidence in knowledge. Our public has not uh, been uh, made to think and to, sorry, to trust uh, uh, these uh, think tanks and the importance of these think tanks when it comes to the decision making processes. Uh, so I would like to give you two examples. One of the examples from France when I have uh, when I was a student I had a professor his name is Alan uh, Touraine and uh, Alan Touraine uh, had a paper about whether or not to allow girls uh, to uh, wear the veil or hijab in schools. Uh, I realized something very important indeed uh, because the minister only spoke for a very limited period of time, about five words, and behind him uh, we had uh, a committee that presented a white paper, and this committee was the one that talked to the uh, journalists, and then the minister said we're going to leave this report with the public opinion representatives, and after that we're going to take a decision. So there is a complete cycle when it comes to the decision-making process. So politicians rely on scientific ideas uh, and knowledge, and there is no uh, knowledge without interests. Uh, that is why there should be societal discussion, and in the light of this societal discussion, decisions would be taken. So. So what is happening, for instance, in Lebanon? We have an issue that is taking place, which is uh, the garbage uh, that you find in different parts of Lebanon. And the prime minister uh, had uh, an interview uh, with the, an outlet. Uh, and for a whole hour, the duration of the interview, he did not talk about a committee that was established about this particular matter until he was posed the question. And he said then that there was a committee that was established to deal with this uh, problem, the problem of garbage uh, in Lebanon. So I do not want to be too negative when I talk about the Arab world. I studied uh, and looked uh, into the controversy that took place about uh, inheritance in uh, the inheritance of women in uh, Tunisia. And uh, I looked uh, at the role of research centers and think tanks about this very important matters, matter. Sorry. And also when it comes to the policies uh, pertaining to Syrian refugees in the GCC, I do defy you. If you can find a website whereby uh, we can understand why Syrian refugees should have access or not have access in the GCC countries. As Dr. Mahjoub has said, uh, uh, these matters uh, are only tackled from a security dimension and you wouldn't find any document whereby it says that a decision or political decision was undertaken based on this research. Uh, so we'd like to ask a number of questions and after that give the floor to the audience. Do you think, Dr. Qabani, that decision makers have enough think tanks and research centers that would evaluate uh, situations on the ground? Or do you think that the decision makers have their own mechanisms other than think tanks and uh, research centers? You talked about a weakness or shortage of communication. So this is a kind of a complete comprehensive cycle that is taking place. Yes, the decision makers in the Arab world, in the MENA region in general, do not deal much with the outcomes of uh, research that is being produced by think tanks and uh, research centers or political analysis centers. So 
the support of the decision-making processes happens uh, within centers that are part of the government, that are part of ministries, uh, and uh, sometimes through specialists, advisors uh, in the Arab uh, world. We have so many centers uh, that give consultancies uh, and who deal and cooperate with decision makers. Uh, so these institutions are very important indeed, but we have to look into the environment of policies in general. So these uh, uh, environments should be very rich indeed in terms uh, of having independent uh, analysis centers uh, and also policy centers uh, and think tanks, uh, research centers, centers that deal with the accumulation of data, independent and governmental uh, institutions. Uh, so the richer this system is, uh, the more this environment is active, uh, the more it would lead uh, to uh, giving the decision maker the information he or she needs from those different entities. But if the decision maker is forced uh, to take decisions in the absence of uh, independent uh, research uh, papers, uh, if he is forced to resort to consultancies, uh, to consultants, uh, then we have to know that those consultants are uh, seeking profit or profitability. So this is a different matter altogether. So. so it is like somebody looking at a mirror and choosing what is suitable. Let's talk about uh, the state of Qatar. In the state of Qatar, we have independent centers. We have uh, centers that support the decision-making processes. We have think tanks. Uh, we have political analysis centers. So this is a kind of a rich environment. Uh, and uh, these institutions that we are talking about uh, accumulating data that can be analyzed. Uh, this is linked to what Dr. Sari talked about. Uh, sometimes uh, the gathering, the accumulation of information is is very limited indeed. For instance, you would have uh, the statistics uh, and development uh, ministry that is in charge of doing that. Uh, and also we have another center at Qatar University, which is the Cessary Center. These are the only two kind of sources of data. So there is a weakness when it comes to figures, figures that should be analyzed uh, and uh, consequently political proposals are made. So it is a very rich environment, but not complete, not complete. When it comes to the remaining Arab countries, the environment is very, very weak indeed. So there is a problem. So you think that there is a weakness, there is a shortage here in the state of Qatar, although it is leading compared to other Arab countries. Dr. Azadine, how can this environment be adequate in order to facilitate the work of uh, the research centers uh, for them to be able to give the figures that should be analyzed? We have so many problems. We have structural problems, for instance, when it comes to the structure of power or authority, when it comes to authoritarianism, as my colleague had said, that the decision-making processes do not go through structured channels. The decision makers uh, would surround themselves with consultants. If you look into the CV of those consultants, you would uh, wonder why uh, these consultants are in such position. So uh, you would find that there are so many policies that show you why, why the decision makers have resorted to such decisions due to the fact that they relied on those consultants. Uh, so there is a problem when it comes to the uh, structure of uh, authority, when it comes to the uh, advice giver and the way it is given. So there's a problem with regard to this culture and the relationship of this culture with think tanks or independent uh, kind of research center is not a well established uh, kind of relationship. In addition to that, we have this uh, stereotypical image about research centers, particularly the ones that are funded from outside. This is an additional component that leads to a negative image about uh, these centers in the mind of the decision makers. What creates this negative uh, image? Uh, 
foreign funding due to the weakness in national or local funding these centers would resort to international or foreign funding so this is another additional component that leads to this kind of doubt uh, and concerning relationship so now we would like to move uh, from we are moving from a lack of information state into uh, a lot of information that are not accurate uh, there are some countries that are moving towards democracy there is uh, a law that is being established in those countries that would enable people to get uh, pieces of information from the different governmental entities uh, and we have in Tunisia, a law that entails citizens to get uh, information from any governmental entity, and the, the governmental entities do not have the right to cover up such uh, information. Now, we live in an environment whereby we have uh, a lot of information that come from different sources, from uh, different uh, entities all the time, but we cannot verify such information in a very limited period of time. So how can we produce uh, uh, information, inf produce uh, knowledge based uh, on that piece of information? How can you produce good research based on that uh, uh, piece of information? Dr. Mahjoub, with regard to politicization, the decision makers in politicizing this matter does it mean that they really want to reach a logical kind of analysis but or they just try to fund those decision those uh, think tanks uh, for them to reach decisions that are in keeping with their own inclinations and this leads to catastrophes so politicization uh, is twofold the first uh, side is about uh, putting these uh, research centers in uh, a place where they are accused and doubted and uh, the second matter is those centers are sometimes forced to produce what the government what the authority wants so they become a tool for that government i would like uh, to take a step forward when we talk about uh, research centers uh, we have to remember that we are talking about social and uh, uh, human studies uh, so you were talking about humanities uh, so we are talking about this situation which is similar to the sons and daughters of the first wife that they are not loved enough due to the fact that the father has divorced their mother so this is similar to that particular situation so these kind of sciences or kind of specializations are not very much appreciated and respected in the arab world compared to natural sciences that is why we find that there is a concentration on uh, s natural sciences more than uh, social sciences uh, because they think that these social sciences do not need capabilities do not need funds uh, so it is just a matter of words uh, it is a matter of producing words uh, talking for the sake of talking without any content uh, so one of the most important problems that these research centers fa face uh, is the way people look into those centers uh, uh, linked to policies and things to do with social matters and so on and so forth uh, so when uh, this view is as such you start having a problem you would find that so many of those centers do not produce any research in those topics and then you would find uh, a regression when it comes to the capabilities of human capital in the arab world we do not have a generation of uh, historians uh, similar to the cap uh, caliber of uh, abdul aziz al duri or hisham al arabi uh, or any of the great uh, historians that we used to have in the past uh, also we do not have a great sociologist as we used to have we do lack scholars people who are specialized in social studies 
particularly the ones that are of very, very high caliber. This is due to the circumstances that have been forced by governments uh, because these sciences are question posing question uh, centers. Uh, so when these uh, centers uh, are not given the opportunity, you're not going to have neither intellect nor policies. So how can we establish such kind of policies if we lack the knowledge that is required. So we have this politicization. So we have uh, this level of concern, uh, this level of doubt when it comes to this environment of centers and think tanks. If we do not pay heed to humanities and social studies, if we do not pay heed to liberties, and also if we do not give importance to an open kind of environment, these think tanks and research centers are not going to be a able to compete with Western centers uh, because uh, the centers in Europe uh, have the ability to create and produce ideas. And if this does not happen, this is going to lead to paralysis in this field. Dr. Mohammed Masri, do you think that in the future these centers will focus more on uh, humanitarian sciences, or do you think that decision makers will always f have some concerns and fears about this? Uh, I think that, uh, I don't think these sciences uh, can really confront uh, the political systems in the Arab world, and I agree with what Dr. Mahchoub said, that there is a lot of uh, uh, deterioration in uh, social and humanitarian sciences and the times for research in this field uh, have gone back uh, in fact uh, this is exactly because there is a lot of uh, focus on applica applica no, si uh, applied sciences uh, yeah, the one where they want to create physics uh, physicians uh, physics uh, sorry and uh, mathematicians uh, and the, and our our mission in the research centers for example the creation of the arab center for research was an attempt or a contribution with other uh, researchers in humanitarian uh, and social uh, uh, sciences to improve and to focus on this uh, issue on the Arab world and to improve it to be a world uh, at the same level of the world. Uh, and uh, this was the, the, our mission. And I think, uh, uh, in fact, I would say, let us think uh, in, in another way. Why do you want to change the ac academics into advisors to the political uh, decision makers? At them, that most of the political system do not respect human rights and do not even respect uh, the opposition political parties and do not allow them to have any influence on the public opinion. According to Arab Indicator, which is an international uh, 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 pool we make, we find that most of uh, the uh, public in the Arab world do not want to take part in the uh, legislative uh, uh, elections because they think that the parliament do not affect the policies of the country and the politics, and politics is the monopoly of the state of the government, and uh, who and the government that have some advisors who give them the best recipes of how to continue their political system as it is. I think there's a sort of uh, 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 misunderstanding here in, uh, in the, that uh, the, that we want to change uh, or to transform the uh, researchers into advisors to the politicians while as what we want is to have an academic uh, environment uh, that can be effective here comes the issue of funding uh, but the funding is from the government uh, and and uh, that's why you find that the uh, government uh, and uh, there's also this foreign uh, funding or finance uh, uh, the sometimes do not accept any foreign uh, finance or uh, funding because that would mean uh, a violation of human rights and might be accepting the, to be under influence of others. Uh, but uh, by, by foreign uh, finance or funding, uh, we do not mean that, the sh that we, we accept any influence on the researchers. I agree with the, I, uh, I agree with the gentleman that 
uh, the, sometimes these uh, um, Arab researchers who get their fundings from uh, American centers, but these are still capable of to uh, uh, produce very good researchers. But the problem is that the agenda of financing or funding in the Arab world, uh, in the, for the past seven years, we find that any researcher in any uh, think tank uh, want to study a phenomenon such as poverty, that this they could not find any uh, funding for that. While uh, there will be uh, en enough funding for a certain specific number of topics that are being imposed by the agenda of these countries. So there are no, there's no funding for important and basic issues. Uh, and here comes uh, the importance of the, the funding coming from the states. Uh, I, I, I want to speak about the scientific community. I think one of the main important things is that the absence of a good institutional uh, scientific communities in the Arab world. There are no associations uh, for specialization, specific specializations. I am the head of International Association for Sociology. The Arab world is the number where there is the least number of associations for so sociology. Why? For example, in Qatar there is no such thing. Uh, uh, the, so the, the scientific society or uh, community are the, is the only way to protect the researcher so that he can uh, express his opinions. If there is no scientific uh, association or community, uh, it would be easy to influence for, for the government to, to stop any criticism by a researcher. I remember in Egypt uh, some 15 years ago, when Saad al-Din Ibrahim uh, was imprisoned because of uh, his, his position, uh, center, Center Ibn Khaldun Center, there was no scientific uh, community in Egypt to defend him, uh, and uh, it was difficult to find any institution that would adopt a petition to condemn the, his arrest, uh, his imprisonment. So there's a big problem uh, in the under the, uh, tyranny that there are under the tyranny, tyrannic uh, regimes that can have such communities. We now take uh, the questions from the audience. Uh, Dr. Shokawi. I thank all the panelists and for their beautiful, good ideas. Please introduce yourself. Muhammad Sharqawi. And I'd like to thank uh, the, general, the panelists uh, for enlightening us uh, about the different uh, challenges the uh, research centers face. I think these centers in the Arab world find themselves in a very uh, uh, narrow uh, corner because of the uh, uh, an unnatural relations between the creation of knowledge and uh, between the politics. Uh, uh, we notice that the research centers in USA and Europe are something necessity, are a necessity for the politicians. While in the Arab world, uh, whether the presidents or the kings or even um, uh, parliamentarians, they consider that as a luxury, as a something that is just a, a luxury thing and that has not, uh, that has nothing to do with decision making. The question is, how can we look into, expect a real reconciliation between the Arab research centers and the creation of uh, knowledge and the political elite on the basis that uh, these researchers will be in the service of politics and not the contrary? Abdurrahman Kamel. Uh, thank you. I thank all the panelists. Uh, we are here speaking about the role of the think tanks in the creation of uh, uh, the policies of the government. Uh, the politics uh, should be pragmatic, and the uh, research centers, there's no uh, co uh, communication and, uh, between the different uh, centers. Uh, 
there should be have an umbrella that brings together all the uh, the think centers, the think tanks, whether the private sector or the government. Uh, um, and uh, so that they shed light on the different issues of the region. Uh, as for the comparison between uh, the Middle East, uh, we find that Israel is the first, uh, has the first, uh, is the first in uh, the Pennsylvania, the indicator in research, uh, and Iran also, Turkey also. So wh what's wrong in this? What's wrong uh, with the Arab countries? Uh, we find that these governments are pro progressing, we are not, so I... Uh, Dr. Arafat. Thank you, Uthman, and I'd like to thank the panelists for their very good uh, presentations. Uh, I think that the main problem uh, that the, the, the research centers are all facing in the Arab world is that the idea, this idea is a new idea in the Arab world, uh, and these ideas and these centers are, in fact, uh, uh, prospering in uh, more open democratic uh, societies than they can do so in, in uh, tyrannic uh, countries. Uh, but what I want to, um, Dr. Sari, to some shed some light on is uh, the issue of funding. Uh, sometimes the lack of funding, uh, some conditional funding, uh, is something that many institutions uh, face, not in the Arab world, but also outside. And also the the belonging, belonging, or the adherence, or whether politically or uh, ideologically, even the Western countries, where that uh, the liberal uh, uh, c uh, parties or institutions or centers have a different uh, uh, agenda than those that who are uh, not uh, uh, liberal, uh, and there are also uh, the Arab world and the Western world. There are a lot of influences uh, by uh, the, these centers on the people. Uh, as a result of their research. So what Dr. Sari think? Thank you for a, doctor, a student in Georgetown University. My question is to Sari Ahjoub. You spoke about the cultural and educational uh, uh, problems that the researchers are afraid uh, that they want to go to a prison or don't to be killed uh, if they do produce something that is that not unpleasing for, that is unpleasing for the government. Uh, my question is: this uh, uh, education or cultural problem in the Arab world, uh, we we don't feel that our work is our property; uh, it is ours. Uh, and the researcher or even a student thinks that. Uh, he only works to gain some money and not to produce something that is p for him, for his legacy. So uh, what do you think about that, about producing research as a service or for decision makers? That's, uh, Dr. Sharif Lamadi from Doha International uh, Institute for the Family. Our work in our student is to make uh, uh, studies and uh, researches about uh, the policies of change. But I think that if the prevailing uh, idea within the decision makers is not a democratic one, then that will mean that the research will be only collection of some information for that goes in line with the, with the, uh, with the ideas of the uh, majority. So how would they accept this? And I think this, uh, this is the problem, that they only listen to one opinion, that of their advisors or their own ideas. Uh, consequently, the results that you, you you do some uh, researches and put the ideas of the majority, but they will, uh, will be neglected because not what they want. Uh. Shukran, Mum and Abdullah, researcher. Uh, I thank the panelists for their presentations. I would like it only to say that the idea of uh, collection of uh, formation in the Western society is something very much advanced. Here I speak about the anthropological institutions for the discovery of continents, African or Asia. That's why the, uh, this is a, a culture, a culture in the memory of the, the Western societies in general. My question is, how can we 
uh, convince our decision makers, especially our researchers, how can they, the researcher, convince the decision maker to take their decision on the basis of the papers or the uh, studies they had prepared, especially that uh, one decision maker might take, for example, the Minister of um, Interior or the Prime Minister might take the, 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 uh, these uh, ideas uh, 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 here comes the issue of the culture. The West, they have this culture that uh, depends on the anthropological uh, studies. And uh, in France, there were these expeditions that began the 17th, 17th centuries. And uh, the question once again is how can we con convince the decision makers who are, don't have the culture uh, as big as the, uh, uh, the European, the history, how can they convince them to take uh, the, the ideas of these centers into consideration in their decision making? The lady there in the back, yeah. So. Thanks would, is. Would you, would you please introduce yourself? My name is Najma Begum. I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I'm PhD research scholar from Area Study Center, University of Peshawar. After the re fund release to improve the research quality, what effective methodology or tools think tank will use to assess the research quality for decision makers? Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Hawass. Thank you. I have two questions uh, to the Mr. Masri, and uh, who distinguishes between the researchers who produce knowledge uh, who uh, to affect the public opinion and the advisors uh, who present ideas about politics. Uh, my question is, don't you think that there's a possibility of integr integration between the, two, between the two? For example, rent cooperation, uh, th there was a number of uh, researchers on uh, basic and theoretical uh, uh, science for such Schilling, who are the Nobel in, uh, uh, in economy, and is one of the researchers in Rand Corporation, which was part, in fact, with the American Navy, and one of the main, the first uh, re think tanks that uh, the whose work was uh, to answer one question is how to deter uh, the, uh, the Soviet Union at the time, especially with the possibility of uh, nuclear uh, confrontation. Fukuyama also research was in Rand Corporation, and he also a researcher in political uh, and uh, theoretical uh, sciences. So is there a possibility that there should be a sort of integration between the two? complementarity uh, in, a, in a way that to the theories, the basic theories should be in service of the uh, uh, applications of uh, politics. And then the, most of the speakers link between what tyranny and the impossibility or difficulty of uh, ha achieving any progress in the, for these uh, think tanks. While as the, the history of the uh, the modern history shows that there is the enlightened ruler, such as we found in Russia, and the, the Russian uh, ruler who went to the West uh, under disguise. Uh, and also we have Ali Pasha, who sent uh, uh, a scientific uh, uh, group, including uh, Tantawi, to the West to, to get another knowledge, and who came back and uh, uh, created uh, so many liberal parties in Egypt thanks to his studies. Uh, and papers, and uh, there are also these systems that we think that are democratic, but they were in fact uh, tyrannic in the beginning, such as the case in uh, Singapore and Korea, who are tyrannic regime, or nevertheless they uh, achieved a lot of progress. And the present Chinese uh, regime, who has created so much development and uh, advance, but, but it's not uh, democratic, it's uh, tyrannic also, but has encouraged the ideas and development of ideas, and we know what uh, the dunks you being uh, achieved from uh, so my question is can't one uh, find a sort of w a way so that you don't want the dichotomy of having tyrannic or res uh, res uh, idea creation of ideas Be otherwise these uh, centers would be meaningless as long as the arab country other regimes are tyrannic we will take the lady here on the right and then we come back to the different panelists 
شكرا جزيلا اسمي I co-found the think tank in uh, economic policies uh, in Tunisia and uh, my question is on um, one of the main obstacles that we are facing there is the technical assistance from uh, international financial institutions we are advising uh, may, many of the, uh, of the Arab uh, government uh, in our country and uh, which I mean, it, it is quite difficult for us to challenge Uh, their policy recommendation because it's uh, conditionalities uh, of loans. So I, I would like to, to, to ask you how we can challenge this, uh, this policy recommendation and how we can uh, better influence uh, decision makers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the lady next to her, please. Thank you very much. For this uh, seminar, I am a student uh, from uh, Doha S Center uh, for uh, Studies or Institute. So what is the future of think tanks and research centers in the Arab world if you say that uh, policies and research have not uh, find any found any response in the Arab world? So what is the future of these think tanks and uh, Uh, centers for studies uh, if uh, these uh, kind of ideas are going to remain uh, uh, without being implemented. Uh, what is the point uh, of funding these uh, think tanks and research centers uh, if these ideas and such knowledge is not being used by the decision makers? Uh, many universities do not concentrate on research. They do not concentrate on the importance of having researchers. If we're going to continue funding these think tanks without any change on the ground, so what is the future then of such kind of think tanks and research centers? Uh, Dr. Qabbani, do you like to start? Uh, so many or so much of the discussion was about the relationship between the decision-making processes and those uh, research centers. Uh, the main point is that there is a gap. There is a gap between research centers and the decision-making institutions. We can say that the decision makers uh, do not uh, get the right piece of information, the right research for them to be able to benefit from. Uh, but uh, there is a responsibility that is being shouldered by those centers because they have to interpret the information they receive and then give such information and such knowledge uh, to the decision makers for them to be able to include such information in the decision making processes. Uh, let me be frank that so many things do not happen in consultation with the decision makers. Uh, sometimes the consultant would come and say, I want this study or that study. So the topic is very intricate uh, and the responsibility is shouldered by everybody for us to be able to enhance the situation. With regard to the BDC, the Brookings Doha Center. We have so many studies, we have so many discussion sessions, we have so many open events where we discuss so many topics, but the question that is being posed, uh, so how can we move uh, to the second phase whereby we can communicate strongly with the decision makers? Uh, And we do not want just to give and try to persuade. No, we have to have a certain exchange. Uh, and we have to find ways to reinforce this relationship because this is part and parcel of our responsibility. Yes, what is being said is true. It is right. We have to change this dialogue system. And each entity has its own role. Dr. Seri, you talked about funding, which is a very important point. And Dr. Arafat also talked about it. Isn't it justified that there are some doubts vis-a-vis -vis certain centers uh, that have a relationship with the funders? Uh, so Isn't it uh, right to have question marks here? Yes, this is right. Any accurate sociological analysis should always take 
into account uh, the will of the people who are active and effective. Uh, so that is why I try to undertone the discourse that is prevailing, that is concentrating on the different issues that we are finding. So when they talk about French funding, that means that the agenda is a French agenda. And there are a number of studies that have been issued. I have had a book that I wrote uh, uh, a few time, uh, a few uh, years ago about uh, the uh, global elite uh, and uh, the elite in Palestine and so on and so forth. Uh, so why are we talking about the global elite? Because we have had uh, so many people who have been raised in Palestine who speak the language of the donors. Uh, so these people have become interested uh, in issues uh, that are uh, central for the Palestinian cause. So if I invite and call uh, for understanding this uh, uh, knowledge production, I have had enough uh, of people saying that this center is Qatari because it is funded by Qatar, or this is a center that is Emirati because it is funded by the Emirates. Uh, we have to study to what extent uh, this is a center that is free and that is independent. This is very important indeed. There are three points that I would like to talk about and underline, particularly from the different uh, interventions that we had. So uh, knowledge production is not only important for the decision makers. No, it is very important when it comes to raising awareness uh, for the public and for the CSOs, the civil society organizations. And here I would like to give you the example of the state of Qatar. In my opinion, one of the main decision makers uh, in uh, the state of Qatar is the Ministry of Endowment when it comes to family issues. So the question that I would like to uh, ask here, to what extent uh, and how many times have you sat with the religious leaders? Uh, especially that these uh, decision leaders uh, are taking so many important decisions when it comes to consanguinity and so on and so forth. Uh, so I think uh, we should not uh, uh, try uh, not to confront what is taking place in a country such as Syria. We have uh, so many researchers, uh, despite uh, the situation that is happening, despite the tyranny that prevails in Syria. Yes, so many of them live outside Syria, but they have been raised in Syria. Let me concentrate uh, on uh, the uh, main or important players. The point that I would like to talk about, we researchers also have a problem. We cannot just blame the decision makers and say <coughs> that uh, the decision makers are authoritarians. So, no, we cannot do that. We have to blame ourselves as well. There are so many people, uh, much of the elite does not communicate with each other, particularly when we have, let's say, a uh, secular elite that does not talk to the religious elite uh, from Zaytuna or from Al-Azhar. And uh, if I graduate from the American University in Beirut, uh, I would uh, study the conferences that took place uh, and that covered the Intifada. And uh, really, I found that there is an absence of uh, Islamists uh, in those conferences that have been convened. Is this because of an American agenda? No, no. The uh, ones that have established such agendas are Lebanese people and Arab people. The first government, uh, the first conference in which we had all these representatives uh, is the conference that was uh, uh, convened by the Isam Faris uh, Center and I know that there are so many research centers and so many think tanks that are uh, 
uh, Islamic and uh, they rarely talk to other kind of uh, secular elites because they think that the, what they are going to hear is not going to be pleasing to them. I would like to talk to you about the uh, authoritarians uh, and the relationship between them and uh, those think tanks. Uh, I would like to continue from where Dr. Seri stopped. I think that uh, so much of the research uh, that is being uh, prepared uh, has an impact on our community. Let's differentiate between a research center and political analysis centers or think tanks. Uh, those think tanks wants to want to come up with uh, recommendations about certain transformations that are taking place uh, for the decision makers uh, No need to take, but the research uh, centers, they try to develop uh, the tools of research to have uh, more specializations and to deal with the reality on the ground and also to collect and gather data. So this is the difference between the two. And I'm talking from the experience of the Arab Center. We have had some influence on the research agenda and also when it comes uh, to the diversity of topics that are relevant to the Arab citizen. So when it comes to development, development is not linked to democracy. There might be development without democracy. But once again, the matter is to what extent do you want to barter in order to change and uh, Uh, try to uh, rectify your research paper to be pleasing to the re uh, to the decision makers. First of all, you have to guarantee funding in uh, social or sociological studies, and also researchers should be free and should not fear for their lives. Uh, there is a, an issue when it comes to these centers. We, the Arab Center for Studies, a few months ago, we asked the Pennsylvania University for us not to be part of uh, the ranking that is being carried out because there is a pivotal kind of issue because they mix up between research centers and think tanks because there is a difference between the two because think tanks, they produce uh, political reports. We told them that we are not a think tank. We are a research center and a small part only of this center carries out analyses that try to monitor the developments that are take place. Uh, so there are a number of research centers that are part of universities, but unfortunately, they do not communicate with the community of scholars and researchers in other parts of the world. And then you find an, a, an American university that will try to rank and classify the different research centers. Uh, in the Arab world. For them, when they think about think tanks, they think of uh, consultants or advisors to the decision makers. Uh, so particularly when it comes to these pivotal matters, uh, if we take the definition that was given by Dr. Mahjoub, uh, talking about uh, humanitarian, uh, human and sociological studies, these studies aim to make the citizens happy and not to issue reports uh, in order to reinstate the political system and the hegemony of the political system. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahjoub. Uh, we spoke about, you asked how, what are the benefits of these centers then? I would like to remind you that uh, we must not look into the role of the research centers uh, in a way separated from the context and other institutions in the society. That is to say, research centers play a role. I don't agree with what uh, said by the, the two gentlemen, Dr. Salim and Dr. Muhammad. There is a effect, uh, a real effect uh, 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 of, uh, created by the, the research centers. Uh, uh, the, the, and this effect uh, is not as big as we were we hopes for, but the question is, how much can we change uh, the policies and the visions of the different governments? Uh, 
This is related to another context. It is related to a context of freedoms, democracies, the openness of the uh, regime to other uh, re uh, institutions. Sometimes some non-democratic uh, uh, regimes might uh, be capable of listening to the other points, uh, points of view, and uh, the contrary is true also. That's I, what I think the research centers are talked about as if they are a constitutional parliament. That's it. The, the, the constitution, in some countries there are constitutions, and historically speaking, the still should distribute the uh, different authorities and decide what are the authorities. While as we know that in the Arab countries, constitution is only a, tools for t a tool for tyranny. The, so the, the, uh, there are so many good ideas, but the way they are dealt with are bad. That's why I think that the research centers are influential on the society and the awareness of people and, uh, and the way people think, but uh, we must uh, be, be sure that such an influence can not come overnight. No, the, this change uh, comes gradually after a long time. We in the Arab environment in general, we don't have uh, uh, privacy or own privacy. Everybody intervenes at the face of others. The Arab citizen has under so much uh, media pressure to reorient him, to reshape his ideas and his values. Since the end of 19th century to the present time, if you look into the media context and the Arab world, uh, there is no citizen all over the world that has been under so much uh, pressure uh, uh, such as the Arab uh, citizens. Uh, they are uh, required to be democratic in a short period. They are required to respect human rights in a very short time, while as the environment and the circumstances do not uh, call for that. Uh, and finally, I would like to say that if we look into the, the environment of research centers, the Arab centers, if we cons compare ourselves to Israel, Turkey, or Iran, we are definitely in a very bad position. But we must also keep in mind the political environment in these countries in a way that the comparison should, be, should not be unfair. Uh, so we can see the most important uh, seven uh, 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 center of studies are in Israel. We know that these centers have such a big budgets. Uh, and Turkey also, by the way, Turkey in the past 10 years have encouraged and increased the number of their research centers and made a very big uh, change. Uh, the political uh, will is clear there. And I think it's related to the role of the state in uh, supporting and encouraging these centers. Also that applies to Iran also. And also another thing is uh, there is something maybe we have forgotten in this discussion that's to say we are we are not uh, at the beginning and uh, uh, in front line uh, no. We are now speaking about the digital world. Uh, in the digital world, everybody speaks about uh, the human being who is influenced and has little influence on the others. And the human being who are, whose lives are being penetrated. Uh, li notice with me that those uh, who specialize in natural sciences have created everything that is related to digital world. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and who should uh, solve these problems? It is the people of the social and humanitarian uh, sciences, those who uh, created the, the computers and uh, created the problems then, but at the humanitarian uh, scientists are required to solve the problems. Uh, so I think in light of our digital uh, world and the effects and the pressure on human beings, one needs to think out of the box uh, by jumps, not by step by step, so that they can be, be become really, as the lady said, with this uh, uh, s s center should be more effective. And uh, um, I'm sorry, we have very short time. I cannot give uh, uh, questions to the audience. Uh, the last question to Mr. Razaddin. I answered three questions, beginning from the correction made by Abdurrahman about Iran and Turkey. It's not uh, true that the Iranian and Turkish and Israeli centers are in the first positions. Uh, uh, if you look into the first ten, uh, we'll find that so with eight of whom are Arab and two are Israelis, and there are no Turkish or Iranian centers in this classification or positioning. But as the Dr. Uh, Mahjoub said, the, the environment is different 
different, but on the classification uh, level, that's different. Uh, as for the influence and uh, effectiveness, uh, there is a, a direct uh, influence uh, um, for uh, these centers that can affect directly the decision makers when they are when they ask for the opinion of the centers. But the indirect uh, uh, effect or influence is what we are doing, we who are not attached to governments. What we are doing now in this um, uh, discussions and in others and about politics and uh, all this affects indirectly in the creation of public opinion and uh, public awareness and all are this part of the we ways of infl being influential. And this is what we are doing and that will affect the decision making. Uh, Finally, Dr. Shalqawi, I do agree with you that we should have reconciliation, not only between the research centers and decision makers, but also reconciliations, other reconciliation between the elite themselves, as Dr. Sari said, the elites uh, who require a lot of effort to get closer to each other and to uh, have some common points and join there. And also the research centers need to reconcile between themselves. Uh, in the Arab world, there is an attempt to create a sort of uh, a community of research centers on the Arab and the regional levels and also on the local level to create uh, uh, some opportunities and platforms that, that provide work for these uh, research centers. Thank you very much. I thank you all for being here with us, and uh, I thank our panelists uh, from the right, Dr. Sari Hanafi from the American University in Beirut, Dr. Mohammed Nasri, CEO of Arab Center for Research, uh, and Dr. Mahjoub Zouari, Director of the Center of uh, Gulf in Qatar University, Dr. Azuddin Abdul Mawla, Director of Research in Al Jazeera Center for Studies, and uh, Dr. Nadir Qabbani, the Head of Research and Brookings Center in Doha. Thank you all for being here, and we also thank all our uh, viewers who have been following us at on Al Jazeera Mubashir. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos from Brookings.